Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm actually going to do a combination. So it's going to be a time lapse and I'm going to render a little bit on uh, the finished panel. So what happened here is I, I wanted to do a page where it was a sequence or transformation of Bruce Banner to the Hulk. And I, and I have this constant uh, frustration when my iPad uh, dies in the middle of a, a project or you know I don't want to I'm lazy I don't want to get up and go plug it in or whatever because I'm in the zone of drawing so I try to squeeze out as much art as I can then all of a sudden it it dies on me right and I thought well that'd be kind of a neat way to explain why Bruce Banner snaps and transforms into the Hulk albeit you know a little dramatic right you don't get that mad when your device dies hopefully you don't anyways but I thought it'd be funny so uh, I created this one and also, really, it was a good way to practice stretching my legs and doing some more storytelling. Uh, as you know, I got my Blackstone comic, which I need to jump back on and uh, do some pages for that. And I've kind of hit a little bit of a stumbling block with the creative uh, energy for it. And But, you know, nonetheless, I still need to practice telling stories, uh, even if it's not in my own book. So I think fan fictions like this are fun to do, mainly because if I can't think of great ideas for my own characters, plenty of developed ideas that I can harness some energy from you know obviously I can look up lots of reference to the Hulk and different uh, page layouts and yada yada so uh, so at any rate this is just me trying to you know develop my skills and draw out a page uh, even though I, I feel like some of the elements of the page uh, needed to be more detailed uh, keep in mind too this is all done inside of the Procreate app and that's what you see me refining the pencils uh, one more time. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well uh, because I had a, um, a bit of a struggle with getting my pencils uh, to be as tight as I wanted, as they, as they previously were in the software. And I, I couldn't figure out what that was. I, now, when they had updated the brush engine on this, obviously there's a lot more options. Now the inks became uh, a lot better. And I really should be inking this, but I... I also wanted to show you and talk to you about how I like to uh, sometimes refine the pencils to a tighter level and uh, I'll get into why that is. It's basically um, that I, I want to see how far I can take the pencils so that I come up with more ideas. So if I get in the habit of just loosely penciling and going to inks, that helps my inking and that also helps my speed, but it's I find it to be a hindrance for seeing how well I can develop pencils. So, you know, there's just so many different ways to approach this stuff and to think about it, you know, and, and this is just one of the things that I face where uh, if I if I don't get the pencils as tight as I like, I feel like the work's not as good as it could have been. Uh, now, I don't work with an inker, so there's a different uh, relationship that you develop there, obviously, when you're working in a team setting. Uh, sometimes you, you leave the pencils loose and energetic and, and that gives them more, uh, you know, leniency to develop ideas. And, and sometimes you come to a uh, better, you know, end result because of that, you know. So there's, again, there's just lots of different things at play. But when, uh, again, when I'm working on my own projects, I sometimes like to really overdevelop the pencils. And that's what you see me here doing here. But what I started to notice is I wasn't getting the same taper that I like to see, you know, so when I do these little thick to thin lines, now I'm getting getting it the way that I used to um, like it. Like, so uh, I felt like what happened is once they changed the brush engine, the I wasn't getting this nice uh, ability to do the thicker line and this long uh, tapered effect, okay? Now, what happens is, I'll, I'll show you in the, the brush engine real quick. Uh, let's see, was it under preference? Brushes, where is it at? So I am not. Oh, my bad. You got to go right into the brushes. Forgive me. Uh, so technical pencil one. I've got a few of these because I keep modifying it and really I need to rename these. But this is the one I'm using now. And so what happens is you've got all these abilities to adjust the, you know, the pressure taper, and you'll see it interactively affect. Um, should yeah, see how it moves the the um, thumbnail to the right, and it shows that taper difference. Well, the thing is, is that now you have more edits to be able to get in here and modify these. I'm not going to jump in all this. It's really not the main focus of this. But I do want to tell you is the thing that was really messing with me. It's simple and it's right in front of my face is the classic taper. So when you turn this on and off, it basically gives you 
I think it supersedes some of the settings here, but it gives you the old version of the way it interpret, uh, interpreted that's a hard word for me, uh, interpreted the uh, the taper. So you want to play around with that one. And, and like I'm always going to tell you, whenever you get in, in here and modify these, make sure to make a copy. Now, obviously, I should be naming the copy as well. Um, let's see where that's at. Uh, about this brush, maybe? Technical pencil. Yeah, so I'm just going to call this tech pencil. So I know it's you know a der uh, derivative of that first one. Tech pencil. Uh, I'll just put my initials in there. How about that RAM? Simple as that. And then I know that this is so far the one that I like the most. And again, what happens with this one, you can almost see like the previous stage of the pencils that I'm you know now working over top. You see how they're they're kind of messy. Now I was getting you know a bit. I was trying to move a bit quickly through this and do what I would consider a page. I was also watching the time of this page. So this entire page took me eight hours. Now, it's not very detailed. I, I skimped out on the backgrounds, which I really shouldn't have. You should always give enough background elements to really carry the story forward. And I feel like I, I should have made the background better. But uh, but I got I got something in there in the establishing shot. So it at least explains that he starts off in some kind of lab. And you know, obviously, the lab coat helps with that. He's looking at his tablet. And all of a sudden, it says, <laughs> battery low, ready, you know, please charge. And he just flips out, right, like we all do. So... But, you know, regardless, I was looking at the time. It's about eight hours. So some of these pencils that you see to the right are a bit loose because of that. But the other part is really that the taper just wasn't feeling uh, like it should. So now you can see the difference here where these are very tight um, lines. Uh, pretty big difference. So, again, I do want to stress that that's a combination of me, you know, slowing down and tightening up the line work. But also, mainly, I felt a big difference once I disabled or I guess enabled classic taper. Um, so let me just kind of demonstrate that here for you a little bit. So again, I feel like it's a lot easier to get just the right control of the thick to thin. And it, it goes to that nice clean point that I like at the end of each one of these little marks. So as silly as that is, as kind of you know simple as that is, it just it just made it seemed to make a big difference in the way that I feel about doing my finished level of pencils uh, again I kind of got used to just not cleaning them up as much as I normally would have and just going to inks and since they modified uh, the inking brushes I feel like the inking brushes are just really good now I, I love inking uh, with this setup now where before that was a uh, an issue for me it wasn't getting uh, the inks that I liked because uh, one of the main things was when you would throw the line before the 4.2 update it would be very unclean at the end like the it would always seem to wave or not like that but it would do a little wave in there and i don't know what that was or, or you know how they fixed it or whatever uh, now the other thing i want to make sure to mention too because there's a lot of talk about different um screen protectors and i went through a couple of them because i thought this is one of the big problems with digital you have all these different variables and you're not fully aware of everything that's involved uh, always, you know, it takes some education to really get used to all this stuff and learn about the variables. But the um, I didn't know which one was causing that, so I thought, well, let me try one of these better screen protectors, see if I can bridge the gap that way since I can't figure it out. And I went with like a paper-like, I actually grabbed a couple of them. And the paper-like was almost better in the sense that it slowed down the uh, the pencil stroke, but as I started to work with it, it really got annoying quickly. In fact, I ended up ripping up, uh, ripping off the first one. It came in a two-pack, and I went to another one, didn't like that, went back to the paper-like, ripped that one off again, and ultimately went right back to the Tech Armor that I use. It's, so the Tech Armor has got a little bit more slide to it, uh, but it's not as slick as the glass screen, um, and that's ultimately what I've, you know, I kind of looked at my old work too, and it was ultimately the one that I was getting the best pencils on and I'm like well I just got to figure out the other reason why I'm not getting the uh, line work that I like and so yeah so it's a mix of also finding that right screen protector and you know I would say hey just go for the tech armor anti-glare matte finish whatever but uh, but I really think you do have to buy a couple and see what resonates or feels right with you because we're all you know we all like to create differently you might like the slide on the screen I've actually read uh, reviews where people were like oh, I just got used to drawing on the screen I really like it you know and I've seen artists that do that 
uh, you'll see the video and there'll be like an intense glare on their their screen a lot of times and you know some people just get really good with that but for me that was a hindrance as well it, it bugged me oh there's that low battery no i'm not hulking out just uh I'll just have to stop the video here shortly. But um, but yeah, so it's it's one of those things where you, you got to kind of test these different things and see what works best for you. Uh, but like I said, for me, it was disabling that classic taper, going back to the uh, Tech Armor screen protector that I like, and um, really just, you know, getting used to all that stuff in the, the first place was the big one. Like, when I first got this thing, I look back at my old illustrations, they were definitely... Uh, a little lackluster there was parts of it where you could tell I wasn't in full control or getting the control that I like with this uh, and then I started to kind of uh, get in the zone with this and I feel like I got some of my best rendering work now it doesn't mean you're gonna get your best artwork in general in fact a tablet a device is never gonna make you a better artist it's never going to bridge the gap from the fundamentals you still got to study those you know anatomy and and you know the building blocks of, of art you know you just you can't supersede that by a device and whatever uh, things you add to it but uh, you want to make sure that you get the best here you know the quality of work that you're after so that you're not pulled out of the creative moment you know you want to make sure that you're you know you're staying creative you're staying excited about the piece and if there's too many distractions from that then yeah you just probably shouldn't utilize that setup you know you want to you want to really stay in that creative moment i think that's the most important thing when you're inspired and you have an energy for the piece that you're doing it just comes through in the end result and your work just looks more impressive so you gotta you gotta really make that your main focus but at any rate i'm gonna stop here hopefully this is giving you an idea how you know some of the things you can think about when you're working with this type of setup and i uh, hope you enjoy the page i'd love to know what you think in the comments section below and more content's on the way very soon so as always keep drawing keep having fun and bye for now.